Welcome back everyone to part two of how to paint this adorable Shizu. Let's get started. I'm just going to add a really fun little beach ball right here. And I am going to lift his arm up a little bit higher and make it a little bit bigger than what I had here. So I'm going to make uh, a white section here. And I may, because I have so much in the background, I might have to go over this with um, a, a lot of white before I put the colors on here. But we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can just put the colors on straight. Okay? And I think that we're, we'll see. So this will add a lot of fun to the painting, I think. For now, we'll just block in these colors. I'm going to make a big red section here. So for this red section, this is going to be in the shape of a football. Um, and then the rest of them go just towards the right, uh, right hand facing side. And then um, here for the red part, I'm using CAD red straight over the um, you know the towel that's there and a little bit of titanium white and then I blocked that in with cad yellow but I'm gonna have to go over it again with some titanium white mixed with the cad yellow because the yellow is so transparent and the green I'm using is bright aqua green by Liquitex basics and here I'm just using titanium white on the bottom part of the ball this round section here So here I'm pulling the white down uh, to meet up with the red, making the ball more round. And I'm adding the cad yellow with a little titanium white to cover better the area that didn't cover very well because yellow was so transparent. And I decided since the ball was being made very symmetrical with the two red and the two green that I'd go ahead and add the cad, cad yellow to this white section so it's just you know, even on both sides, more symmetrical. So here I'm using a little bit of burnt umber and going around the different sections of the ball just to help them to stand out. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this section so we can get into that uh, pet portrait there. You can listen to this nice piece of music while I'm doing the ball. It's Nocturne in E flat major, OP9 number two. It's on the Muse Open, uh, royalty free music. Beautiful, relaxing piano music. So here I'm going to put in that paw. And I'm using just uh, burnt umber because I needed it to be dark to block out the background color that I had painted there. So I didn't do the regular yellow ochre uh, underpainting. And here I'm just blocking out the background that needs to be blocked out. Um, some highlights in the direction of circle of the ball here, just to kind of show the roundness. Okay, same thing here. And I want to make that a little, a little bit heavier right here, just to kind of round out that ball. bit dark towards the top there just a little bit of highlight okay and I'm gonna do the same thing with the red 
I'm going to add some white and I'm going to add little highlights on the red. I know I'm going a little crazy guys. Um, this is going to be too cute, okay? Just hang in there with me. Um, my little doggy portrait is definitely transforming. Let's, let's put it that way, okay? Um, as I've been going along, I uh, saw some things that I, I just kept seeing different ideas of what I wanted to do with this dog. Um, I didn't really have this planned out quite the way that I should have maybe, but maybe not because I, even though I didn't have it planned out, it's I'm just turning out a little extra adorable actually. And after I do my my newest thought it is going to be so cute because i don't know if the camera is picking it up or not but can you all see what i did on top of this head i went ahead and put like a big floppy beach hat sketch with the chalk and we're going to paint that in and we're just going to see how cool this looks um I think this is going to be so cute and I'm also rather than just having it a tonal background like I originally planned to have I'm going to have some beach sand here and then that is going to be part of the water I'm going to add a little bit of blue we're going to see a little tiny bit of sky up there and um, sort of like making a complete transformation I think that you're going to enjoy the outcome i think we're all going to enjoy the outcome so i'm taking you on this little journey with me because um i don't even know how it's going to turn out okay it's not like i sketched this out or even had this in my mind uh, let's go for it though let's go for it I think this is going to be and so much fun. add this most adorable little little hat here. And I'm going to, I'll go up there and take care of all that after. After I turn off the camera so I don't bore you guys. And we're going to take this little hat and we're going to make this really floppy little hat. And it's going to come down like this. And bring it over here on the side, which I'll bring all those details in later. And then this little hat is going to come around to the front. And it's going to go behind his head. And then we're going to take it up here. It's going to turn. This is actually the going to be like the back side of the hat. I will have it going over here off the off the canvas and then there and then here will be the top of the hat. So now I'm going to just go ahead and color this all in. I'm doing this in a, it's called platinum. This um this is it's artist loft parchment rather i'm sorry parchment and uh let's just go ahead and roughly get this blocked in so i want to tell you a little bit something okay i needed a really good picture of amber this dog and this is actually for one of my nieces my very one of my very special nieces I wanted to paint this for her, for her little dog, and she didn't have the greatest picture selection to choose from. So, like there was nothing that was clear. 
in all the pictures that she gave me as far as details and the whole body and all that stuff okay so she says to me how about if we do one of those pictures of them in an outfit you know like like they have those dogs and the queen's outfit and all that kind of stuff and I was like okay if that's what you want so I was thinking about that and the more I looked at this cute little dog I just could not picture it in one of those outfits and plus my niece is such a beach goer and her and her family love to go to the beach they were raised in the Keys and they just love the ocean and the water and the beach and um, so I asked her how would she like it if I just made it more of like a beach theme because I just can't wrap my head around painting this dog in like a queen's outfit you know those little fancy outfits with the frilly collars and all that I mean I'm not I'm not gonna knock that that's really great and that was like an original thought whoever thought of that to begin with I mean they're popular now but I won't knock it but I'm not crazy about that actually and um, I didn't look forward to doing that and so she said yeah that would be great the beach theme that would be great I figured okay I would go ahead and just paint him with a little towel around him a little beach towel and then just some beachy colors well as I'm going about this I just keep on seeing things that would really add character to this so we're just going for it guys we'll see what happens we'll just see how it all turns out so you are with me on this journey and uh, I'm with you I have no idea how it's going to turn out till it's done so we'll see now I've just filled in the hat with this nice parchment color this very neutral color just kind of blocked it in and um, and then we're gonna put you know some shadows and a little bit of details on it I just think the sack is gonna add so much to this painting it's just gonna look so cute you think so guys you think that was a fun idea it took a lot of the uh, paint to cover over this dark teal color I had on here. But I'm not gonna worry too, too much about complete full coverage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of raw sienna and I'm gonna mix a little of that parchment color in with the raw sienna. And we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of each since we're changing this whole little scene up here so I'm going to take it right here and I'm just going to make it a little bit uneven bring it right along the side bring it right along here just get that color well in block out all this teal that we've got going on can do some crisscross motion or whatever just to kind of get it covered and then we'll put the detail in later a little bit more of the raw sienna and the white so the white will help to cover that teal a little bit better so we'll just add a little bit more white and we'll leave this alone and let it dry work on something else and then we'll come back to this and make sure that that looks like a beachy sandy area and I'm just going to put you know just a little bit of uneven sort of foamy area just go ahead and add that in there just a little bit a little bit 
bit lighter. I'm using actually the parchment color and I'm just taking this brush and I'm just going to add a bit more of the fur texture coming down straight and then turning this little paws turned I'm going to add a tiny little bit of brown and a little bit of parchment so that it's uneven on my brush the two different colors and just pull that over this little ball area a little bit of fur so it looks realistic just kind of play around with it until you feel like it um it looks nice and fluffy and and the little hairs kind of going every which way on his little paws anyway you know they just kind of go here and there and all over I'm going to take a little bit of the darker because I want this to um, come out here a little bit more So here we're going to put a little bit of uh, shadow here on the hat. We're going to darken it up along the rim. Here is the rim of the front of the hat. So we're going to have it and just take a very light hand with this and just kind of blend. But we're just going to get this um, shadowed here. I have um, raw umber, I'm sorry, burnt umber, a little bit of raw sienna, and some of the parchment color. And I just made a very, very light uh, brown to darken up the areas that would be shadowed. I'll just bring that right up to his hair, to his little furry ears and right here because this would be flopped over it's going to go like this and it's going to be darker here would be dark from you know being uh, shadowed from there and just pull it right up like this. And I'll mess with the sides of this um, after I'm off camera from you all. I don't want to bore you with all those details. Darken that up a little. And I kind of want to give a little indication that there is some, you know, straw texture. So I'm actually going to take my Philip Grainer brush. That's what I was about to tell you. And I'm just going to pull that right down. I think it's coming here. And, but I don't want it to be, you know, completely uh, detailed. So I'm just kind of giving a little bit of texture. And the 
this part that's not, you know, totally in shadow, just, just add a little bit of texture to the hat. And um, I'm going to kind of pull through it a little too. because it's like a weave. So just gonna bring, you see how that added just a little bit of a weavy straw texture to that back part of the hat, underneath part of the hat. But I want a little bit of that texture here as well. So I'm just gonna, like, like I did before, I'm just gonna add a little bit Nothing too fussy and not not everywhere. Just a little bit. Come down. And now I'm gonna weave it a little bit. You can make it wet on your, a little bit more wet on your brush so, so that the leaves are just kind of very, very light. And I'm going to take this dark and pull it right along the front. And I'm going to darken it up even just a little bit more. Oops. So what I'm looking for is just an overall um, impression of some weaving going on here. For where the shadow is, under here, I'm just going to make this weave a little bit darker. Here where it's shadowed again, a little bit darker. All of this, and it's going to be rounded. Take it and give it a nice little dark rim. So I have a microphone clipped to my um, to my shirt, and I noticed it really makes the sound so much better. My voice uh, is carrying so much better. Let me know what you think if it's um, better, because I know that I've had a problem in the past with um, with my voice sounding so quiet because when I'm concentrating sometimes on the painting I talk really soft and um, I know that can be a little bit annoying when you're trying to hear what I'm saying and you have to turn the volume up 
So I do apologize for that, but I, I think I've got the problem solved now. Pretty sure I've got the problem solved. So I'm just going to put a little texture on the top part of the hat now. And um, I had turned off the camera and uh, what I did is I took a glaze to put more of the shadow underneath here. What I did is I watered down the brown mixture that I had and I glazed it here and I'm going to do the same thing under here and on the hair where it needs to be shadowed there. And up here, this part of the hat will be very light, so um, I'm not going to worry about glazing. I just want to put some texture in up here and, um, you know, get that little weave going. Let's just take a little bit of this weave texture. That's my dog, huffing and puffing. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to... Okay. So, I'm thinking, here's what I'm going to do, which I did do over here, is I'm just taking a glaze and then these areas that are going to be shadowed. When you mix the water and make it very, very watered down, it doesn't actually cover the details. It just adds the tone that I want in there. So once this dries, you'll actually see the details underneath, like over here. So I'm just adding the shadow, darkening it up with a very watered down brown solution that I made, which is the um, Burnt Umber Raw Sienna. The parchment color and uh, and then water and um, just gonna get that glazed in here in all the shadowed areas now I want to take a little up here of the glaze and go ahead and just pull it right up the top here just to kind of give it a little bit of richness to the color just add a little um, you know a little bit more um, yeah richness I think that's a good word all right, and I'm actually going to have it a little bit darker on this side. So I'm just going to add a little over here. And I'm not sure if I want to add a band on this hat or just have it a floppy straw hat without a band. Um, if I do, add a band that would be, you know, colored, and I would have it go right across here, so I am thinking I will, but for now, we're going to go ahead and leave it like that, and um, I'm going to add a little bit more now to this sand, now that it's dried. Get that all colored in. Get that all colored in there. I'm going to add a little bit of white and the yellow ochre. And just add uh, here and there some um, of the yellow ochre mixed with white and parchment to add a little bit more of. Uh, texture on the beach, you know how it it's never just one flat color. So just go ahead and add that in there. And I always like to take a little tiny bit of darker brown 
mix it in and just kind of add a little tiny areas all around because people have been playing and walking on the beach and there's little footprints on the beach so this dog's been running around playing with this ball and the she I keep saying he by the way it's a she her name is Amber and throughout the whole video I keep saying this little guy and I do apologize for that because this is a little girl so I'm taking a little tiny bit of brown and I'm gonna kind of go right along in a zigzaggy fashion just along this little wave line that I made here where the foam was and I'm actually gonna pull it up a little bit into that and then we'll play around with this a little bit more later and we'll put a little bit of color into the water all right so for now that's it on that and I'm gonna take a glaze and I'm gonna go up underneath the hat with it because this fur would be dark under the hat so I'm gonna darken up the hair here a little bit just a little bit Also, want to darken right underneath his neckline, his um, chin line here. And under his ear. Just glaze in a little bit of the dark. bit more to his feet, I mean to his little legs. I want to add a little bit of light for I'm going to put that little brush away and get my Philip Greener brush. And I'm going to go into that light parchment color and add some of those finer hairs again. Sometimes I feel like a lot of the steps may feel redundant because I do so much layering, but in every painting that I do, every portrait especially that I do, it always ends up that I layer, continually layer on top of, um, layer on top of layer until it looks very realistic. So um, now I'm just adding some of the little finer furs on top of these layers that I had to add that nice uh, realistic look. And when you're doing this, try to be really loose with it. 
dentist pull some of those little white hairs I'm adding a little bit of white into that so that some of these really stand out these little fluffy furs around his little paws and under there would be his little claws so really helps the white pop darken up this area now I'm using the wash again this is much darker in through here so again I'm just using that glaze and I'm pulling it up with my um, with the very wet brush so that's kind of separated here but it's just a regular angle brush Just putting a little richness there. Pulling that right out. Okay. Also, right in through here. And here. Adding this um, golden brown color, you know, how I achieved the golden brown color was the um, burnt umber raw sienna parchment and then I watered it down it, it adds a real nice um, rich golden brown so in all these areas that have this much richer uh, color I'm just sort of glazing that in here it goes like this and then comes out like that and where I want it to be thicker I um, I use that color but not so watered down that way it really adds the darkness to the area where it needs to be much darker because the glaze like I said it doesn't cover the details it just adds the tone um, You know, but where I want to really add details in those darker colors, then I would use that same combination of colors that I had mixed up there, but not watered down. And right at this time, I'm using the watered down glaze. And then every once in a while, some really dark little furs sticking here and there. So I'm just taking the tip of my angle brush and just where I see that those uh, need to be much darker and richer. I've just grabbed a little bit of burnt umber, straight burnt umber, and I'm just kind of pulling that in here. And I'm just using the same brush because it's the same color combination. Uh, if I'm going to go into an area what I, where I want to just use the glaze, then, then I would rinse the brush off so that it's not too thick. His ears, I um, want to bring some of that nice texture down in here in his ears and if you remember way back in the video I had lengthened his his entire ear on the side and 
and uh, I had made a little short video about how easy it is to fix um, a mistake or if you come across something that's uh, the proportions aren't right and you have to go over it how easy it is with acrylic paint to just um, correct those things very very easy okay so just putting in some detail here in his ears and this one would be darker because uh, you know it's shadowed but I am going to grab a little bit of the light parchment with white to kind of pull it over that the shadowed part of the hat so that you can actually see those little ears there see the fur so see as I pull that over that makes the ears stand out and then you see the the detail and the differentiation between where the hat is and the ear is and I am still just using the tip of my ankle brush. So up here, it seems like the hair kind of combines right in with the ear. It's like the ear is a little bit buried at the top with the hair. So I'm just pulling some of those long hairs right over into that ear. And same thing over on this side. It's very light on the bottom. And I'm where I had put that little bit of um, the darker glaze. I want to make sure to to pull those some of those little individual hairs from the beard. <laughs> it's a girl and it's a beard, but you know what I mean. This chin hair, um, and let so that those show. So we'll pull that right over there. And some of the little furs are going this way, and then they turn. And then they go in the opposite direction, like a backward C. And then in this direction, like, you know, like a C. Not quite, not as dramatic. And I really like, when I mix the white in, the titanium white, right in with the, um, the parchment color and just kind of give it a few really bright areas and that looks more realistic this little girl had a um, really short choppy little hairdo I think I mentioned it earlier in the video so I'm going with that because obviously that's what my niece had her hair, you know, the groomer do for her so that she must like this little, this little hairdo. And, um, the lip, the little hairs are coming over this little pouty lip. And I'm going to put some more detail in, of course, to that little lip. Bring in a couple of those little bright hairs. That one got a little too thick. Do that one backwards. Okay, now here there are some bright little hairs. <laughs> if your paint gets too thick, just wipe it off, wet it, dry your brush. And then go grab some of that color very thin on the brush so some of these little hairs it's like a little again it's a girl but it's like a little mustache and some of them I want to stand out um, which will show that that this part of his, her little face actually uh, extends a little bit because of all these little fluffy furs over the mouth. And right up here,
So I want a little bit of this hair to stick out over this um, the rim of this hat. So I'm just going to add a little bit. And again, over on this side, I hope my arm's not totally in your way. I'll try to do it from a different angle. This is challenging, but I want you to be able to see. So I'm bringing the little ear here. I'm going to add white to the parchment again, and I'm just going to pull it out over this hat. and aim the, the ears for going downward. And popping out over the hat. I need to check and see what you were able to see just now and what I just blocked from you. So I'm going to put a fun little reflection on the beach ball. Like there may be some sun over this way, it just kind of... So I'm going to add just a little bit of white like this, just like you do in the eyes to add a little reflection. You can add it right on the beach ball. going to put a little of this just up here on the top of the ball. Just a little bit. And I'm, I'm just using titanium white. Just a little bit. Okay, I like that. We're going to put a band up here. Make sure you bring the band out just a tiny bit beyond the actual rim of the hat. Here I'm bringing some shadow down um, onto the beach towel that would be shadowed from the hat coming over his shoulder and also here on the other side. And just down below his paw.
kind of cute, isn't it? So I do want to just quickly add a few little twists and turns back to this little towel. which this is a little dog, it's a Shizu, however you say that. And so more than likely, since he was sitting on a couch, when this picture that I actually am using for his little face was taken, I imagined that there was actually an owner sitting under here and the dog sitting on top of him. And that's what I'm picturing for this painting anyway. I just wanted to add a little thickness here to this beach ball. Just adding some more roundness to this ball. Leaving it dark under that little paw there. in there. Okay. So that's the end of part two. Please hit the bell so you'll be notified of part three, and we will complete this pet portrait in part three. I look forward to painting with you again, and thank you so much for joining me. Have a good day, everyone. Stay safe. Bye-bye.